David Bristow here with them. Three for All. This is Three Steve Vai Licks from 1984. And of course, Steve Vai is a world-renowned you know, guitar legend, uh, guitar master. And I've been aware of Steve Vai and following him ever since I was a little kid. And I went into a record store and I saw that album, you know, or the album cover. And I thought, what in the world is going on there? You know, the guitar neck's, you know, bending or like it's melting and there's an alien. And it was so weird. I thought, I, I have to buy that. I, I want to see what that is. You know, and I bought it, took it home, put it on, you know, Little Green Men came on. And I was like, what in the world did I buy? What is this? You know, and I listened to it. And there's some very strange, you know, music on that album. That's like the greatest Frank Zappa album that Frank didn't appear on. Because um, it's right after Frank. You know, and you could hear it. It's like Vi is literally dripping with, uh, you know, Frank Zappa's, you know, direction and his music or whatever. But, uh, but I loved it. You know, it took me a little while, but I, I really did like it. And then, of course, from then on, you know, I've been a fan. And I did get to meet Steve Vai, finally. I met him at GearFest this last summer. And it was a dream come true. You know, I thought, wow, I finally got to meet him. And it only was like five seconds. You know, there were hundreds, if not thousands of people that he was meeting, you know, meeting and signing autographs. So it was, it was like that and it was over. But uh, I doubt he remembers meeting me, but I'll never forget meeting him. The licks from this lesson come from an Alcatraz concert uh, from 1984 that was in Tokyo, Japan. And I know I had to actually look it up and like figure out, you know, when was the concert and when officially did Ingve leave and when did Vi join? And there is some confusion about this, but I did do a little extra research just to make sure I had the story straight. So Ingve was actually in Alcatraz. I believe he joined like around 83 and um, he was having some problems with Graham, uh, Graham Bonnet, by the way. And Alcatraz is technically Graham Bonnet's band. He formed after Rainbow. Which Graham Bonnet's a you know a hard rock you know vocal legend you know um, sang with Rainbow, sang with Michael Schenker and Michael Schenker Group, um, eventually formed Alcatraz, and he even recorded an album with uh, Chris and Pelletary too, and a bunch of other people. But Ingve um, kind of broke you know as far as you know broke the scene or became you know kind of known after that first Alcatraz album, and there was a live album that came out after that too. But he left Alcatraz to become a solo artist, and he released Rising Force in 1984. And, um, you know, after that, and it became a success, he just quit Alcatraz. And then Graham, you know, looked for a replacement, and they replaced him with uh, Steve Vai, which he was fresh out of, you know, Frank Zappa's uh, camp at that point. But this is before, you know, he played with David Lee Roth, too. So there's that little window of time where Vi was post Zappa, pre David Lee Roth, and you know he did Flexible, you know he worked with Alcatraz, and he also appeared in the Crossroads movie too with uh, Ralph Macchio. But uh, anyway, um, the licks in this lesson are really interesting because some of them are Steve Vi licks, and they're noticeably Steve Vi licks. But one of the interesting things about watching that concert is when they play some of the Ingve era material. You're watching and hearing Steve Vai play Malmsteen licks, or at least versions of Malmsteen licks. And that was really eye-opening. You know, I'd never really seen that before. And I thought, whoa, Vai is copping some Ingve, and he's playing different. You can tell. Um, it's kind of taking him out of his comfort zone a little bit. And uh, it was really interesting. So these licks come from that concert. And one of the highlights for me during this concert, uh, when they played Painted Lover, which I think that's honestly uh, my favorite, uh, you know, Vi era Alcatraz, you know, song from Disturbing the Peace, which, uh, you know, Ingve left in 84, uh, Vi joined in 84, and then Disturbing the Peace came out in 1985. And that's a great album. If you haven't heard Disturbing the Peace, it's really good. Light a Shade of Green, like Vi's, you know, tapping solos on there. And, uh, you know, it's a full album, so there's a bunch of great songs on there. But when they play Painted Lover on this concert, Vi is playing like this tiny little miniature guitar. And that was kind of common around that time. I mean, Eddie Van Halen was touring, you know, playing little guitars on a tiny, you know, like little Les Paul. But Vi is using this little tiny kind of miniature Strat. And usually when you see guitarists do that, they'll play it for a few seconds or 
you know, a minute, and then they'll change to a you know, normal sized guitar. But Vi starts the song, and he's playing this tiny little guitar, and he rocks it. He plays the whole song, the solo and everything, on this little, just miniature guitar. It was so wild, but I loved it. I thought, wow, I've never seen, uh, he's like bending behind the nut and all kinds of stuff on this little, you know, child size or toy size guitar. <laughs> The first lick comes from when they played Breaking the Heart of the City, and this is this kind of uh, slid melodic phrase that kind of centered around like D minor 7. And if you're a Steve Vai fan, you're going to recognize this lick, because I know I've heard him play this on some of his solo albums, and I think it even creeps up on like uh, Eat Him and Smile and some other, you know, albums he's appeared on. Uh, but it looks like this. <laughs> And I really like when he plays these kind of extended, you know, long range, you know, slide licks. Um, but he's also kind of weaving and he's fretting and then also using a separate finger and sliding into the same note. And you hear this kind of blurry effect. And I'm pretty sure he picked this up from Frank Zappa. And I'm pretty sure Frank Zappa probably borrowed it from Jeff Beck. Because uh, Beck has been doing this for a long time. Um, but there you can kind of see this. And right there you can see, uh, you know, we slid from B flat to C and then grab D on the A string. And then slide from F to G on the D string. And then you're going to fret D right there on the 7th fret on the G. And then after that, grab C on the 5th fret on the G with your index finger and then slide to that same D note. And your ear is going to hear that blur because you're fretting it and picking it and then immediately picking a different note and sliding back into the same note so it catches your attention really cool and then right there he's going to grab this g and then he's going to basically slide into an e so there he's sliding into e he grabs that d on the 10th fret there grabs C, goes back to that D, and then slides the C on the B string up to D on the 17th fret. So you got this really cool kind of blurry lick there at the end too. So it looks and sounds like this when Steve plays it. The next lick is really interesting. This is when they played the song Jet to Jet, which Jet to Jet is an Ingve era Alcatraz song, but the concert had Steve Vai playing the tune. And it was so weird to see, you know, Steve Vai, you know, playing music that he didn't write, but he's copying, you know, like Ingve licks, which you don't normally hear Steve Vai play like that, you know. You don't hear, you know, pedal point licks and harmonic minor and stuff like that that often. I mean, he does use, you know, those techniques and those scales, but, uh, but it was a contrast, you know, to hear Steve Vai play like Steve Vai, and then the next minute you're hearing Steve Vai play a little bit like Ingve. So the lick looks like this. It's very typical, you know, Malmsteen. <laughs> Now typically I don't pick every note uh, when I play licks like that faster. I tend to use a little bit of legato or slur, you know, near the end of the phrase. Something like this. Now when Vi played it, he did it kind of the way that I did, like when I originally demonstrated it there. Um, he was picking, but then he did do a little bit of slurring too. Uh, now when Ingve plays that lick, he picks every single note, I'm pretty sure. He might do a little bit of slurring, I'm not really honestly sure. But uh, the second time through, Vi completely changed it. And uh, when I saw him do this, I was like, whoa, you know, that was really cool. Um, but he taps uh, that melodic phrase. 
So he does this. Okay, so that's really different, you know, to change this to this. That's really cool. Now one more variation I'll include here, um, if you want to work on legato, try playing that solely um, with hammer-ons and pull-offs, and that really becomes, you know, a fretboard challenge. <laughs> The next lick is this really cool like B minor 11 arpeggio based idea, um, but I totally failed. I, uh, I didn't write down what song this uh, appears in, and I also didn't go back and watch the entire concert just to figure out, you know, where was that lick? Uh, I think it was during the song Stripper, but I'm not really sure about that. Um, but a B minor 11 chord, you know, it would sound something like that, which is loosely what this is based around. But it looks like this. And it's a really busy, weird phrase. So when Steve plays, it looks like this. Once again, kind of slower. I really like the way it comes down. It's kind of an unusual, you know, arpeggio fingering. And that's one thing about Steve Vai. He's a very unusual guitarist. You know, um, his fingerings and his ideas confuse my fingers a lot of the time because they don't always seem to, you know, make sense initially. But then you have to kind of see, you know, how I put it together. And it's like, oh, okay, I think I see what he did there. Um, so he's a master at kind of, you know, confusing your hand. Um. So right there you're coming down. And then right there you're going to shift, um, you know, from that A up to a B, or the 17 up to a 19. And that's basically kind of like E minor right there. He's doing, uh, and I like that little taste of E minor, and then it goes right back into that B minor 11. And then right there, you're going to basically uh, shift down. And you're kind of just basically outlining a little piece of B minor right there. A bonus lick from this concert and this is actually uh, the chorus tapping lick uh, from the song God Blessed Video which is on Disturbing the Peace and that's the album you know like I was talking about earlier that Steve I appears on and I've always liked that song it's a very odd you know tune when you hear it and they did a great job you know in this concert where I was like oh my gosh they're killing it um but it's this kind of intervolic you know like tapping idea and uh, there's a lot of tapping on this video. If you watch the concert, of course it was 1984, and of course you got to think what happened in 1984. You know, Van Halen's album 1984, you know, was just an enormously successful, and everybody was tapping around that time. But uh, if you watch this concert, you'll see Vi is tapping like a madman. He's doing all these cool like overhand tapped ideas. And uh, he actually played a solo, it was on sitar, um, and then it kind of turned into, you know, an electric solo. It didn't last very long. Um, and then he also did like a solo, like with all this crazy delay, where it had like, you know, 700 milliseconds or something. Like it was a big, you know, space between what he played and then you'd hear the repeat. It might have been more like a thousand milliseconds, I'm not really sure. But uh, that was really interesting too, where you heard 
this crazy Steve Vai kind of melodic delay kind of thing right in the middle of the song. But anyway, God bless video. Um, <laughs> Looks like that. And it's basically a 16 note phrase, but the way it's phrased and arranged is really odd. And it doesn't really feel, you know, I mean, that's basically, you know, like kind of the tempo or the, the pulse, but the way he assembled that melodic phrase, it's hitting, you know, this kind of syncopated rhythm um, where it's, it's targeting like off beats. And uh, it's interesting the way it flows. <laughs> That's one pass. So there you can see we're basically, you know, grabbing this A and we're just tapping along the 14th fret um, all the way across from the D to the high E string. And then your left hand is doing a single A there on the seventh fret. And then you're gonna basically pull off uh, that F sharp to E. And then you're going to basically do a, a single tap there on 14 and a single D there on the 7th fret on the G string. And then you're going to tap 14 and pull off uh, 7 to 5 or that B to A, you know, on the high E. And then right there, tap the 14 on the B and then the 7 to 5 again on the B string. And then uh, 14 on the G and then 7 to 6 on the G string. So it's kind of revolving around an A major, you know, tonality, but it's skipping and jumps around and it sounds like almost like something Buckethead would play. Really cool, but here's uh, the clip from the concert. That's going to wrap this look at three licks from Steve Vai from 1984. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan. I mean, how can you not, uh, you know, appreciate or respect Steve Vai? I mean, his career and all of his accomplishments. Um, you know, he's a brilliant musician. And, uh, you know, he's knowledgeable. And he's a master as far as, you know, theory and understanding, uh, you know, the components of music. But he's also very expressive and, ex uh, you know, obviously extremely talented. But uh, there's just something about him. He has this energy, you know, uh, with whatever he's doing. It's just like, wow, he's a powerhouse. But uh, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Light Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.